Glad to be here. We really are. I tell you what, I'm nervous. This is a big church for us. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. We go to a lot of small churches. And Brother Terry and I were talking, thank God for small churches that are, you know, they hopefully they'll grow, but uh, and a lot of those are new churches just getting off the ground, and, and we understand that, but uh, most of our ministry is to the smaller churches. And so I'm nervous today. This is this is a mega church uh, for us today. But I tell you, I thank God for the sound system. I really do. We go to some churches, they don't have one. We go to other churches, and people out there can hear this music. We can't hear anything. We're just, uh, but, but this is great. This is a great system here. And uh, I, ch- I appreciate Brother Angel for inviting us. It has been six years since we were here last. I don't, I don't call pastors and, and ask for a meeting. I wait for them to call me. And uh, I waited and waited and waited. And <clears throat> finally, I, I, I said, Lord, he won't call. Would you tell him to call me? And he finally did. <laughs> but I tell you, the ne- you know what? If he invites us the next six years, I'll be almost 70 years old. When I come, I'll be walking up here with a cane and no teeth. And uh, <laughs> Oh, well, we're going to sing a song called My Lord is Taking Good Care of Me. I got up this morning and I started my day. God's mercy was with me all of the way. His goodness stayed close by to meet all my needs. My Lord is taking good care of me. I'm I'm never forsaken. I'm never alone. One day I'm moving to my brand new home. I'm blessed beyond measure. Just look close, you'll see. My Lord is taking good care of me. I'm counting my blessings as I journey along. Good friends, a family, and a place to call home. The church where I worship, the Bible I read. My Lord is taking good care of me. When Satan comes tempting and he brings up my past, I tell him I'm forgiven and it's buried at last. The blood shed on Calvary now speaks for me. My Lord is taking good care of me. I'm never forsaken, I'm never alone. One day I'm moving to my brand new home. I'm blessed beyond measure, just look close, you'll see. My Lord is taking good care of me. I'm never forsaken, I'm never alone. One day I'm moving to my brand new home. I'm blessed beyond measure, just look close, you'll see. My Lord is taking good care of me. Amen. 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 I'm never forsaken. I'm never alone. How many of you, if you you believe that, say amen. Well, I'm glad to hear that because some of you look like you've been forsaken this morning. (laughs) You know, we've been traveling for 18 years, brother. This is our 19th year of traveling for the Lord, and it absolutely amazed me when the Lord put us into this ministry, and I didn't put myself in it. God opened, started opening doors and, and launched us out into evangelism uh, back in 99, and so we've been in over 300 churches uh, in these 18 years, and some, sometimes people say, what do you see out there? What do you see in the independent Baptist churches? And, of course, I see a lot of good things. Thank God for that. Thank God still a lot of churches out there are holding high that King James Bible. Amen. And a lot of churches still knocking on doors. Thank God for that. Still running the buses. Praise the Lord. But there is one thing that I've noticed in almost all the churches. And that is there seems to be an absence of the joy of the Lord. Brother Terry, I've seen it. I've seen it. Now, I don't care what you say, joy shows on your face. It does. Real joy will show on your face. And it seemed like there's a famine of that. And I don't want to depress anybody today. I just wanted to, to, to remind you, we need to, uh, like the pastor said, get our eyes on the Lord 
expect something great and mighty from the Lord today. Say, Lord, do something in my heart. Just rear back and enjoy yourself. Say amen. I see a man back there waving his hand. Praise God. He's not even asking permission to go to the restroom. He's just praising the Lord back there. Amen. Well, this song says no matter what needs to be done, he can. He can do it. Who can speak to a cripple and he'll stand right up and walk? And who can cause the deaf and dumb to hear and start to talk? And who can calm a fevered brow by saying, let it be? Take a little bit of clay and touch them in a way that blinded eyes can see. Oh, he can. And I know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in. For no one's ever done what he's done. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. Now who can cause an old man who's about to say goodbye to lift up both of his dying hands with a tear running from his eye? With his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile and say, don't fear, for the one who brought me through the storm will lead me home from here. Oh, he can, and I know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in. For no one's ever done what he's done. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. Amen. Amen. We sang that at a church in Dothan, Alabama. And the pastor said after the service, he said, I want to take you to a home. And he said, we have a man in our church who's right at death's door. And he's lost his ability to speak. And, uh, but he still communicates. And any time you start talking about the Lord, he waves his hand. I mean, he was just about gone. So we went to his home, took the guitar, and we sang this song for him. And his family was gathered around him, his wife and his, his daughter and, and loved ones gathered around, just like that song says. And he wasn't able to say, the one who's led me this far will take me home from here. But as we sang that song, he raised that hand. He raised that hand. It wasn't long after that, he was home. He went home. And I want to sing that again. Some of you have loved ones that are right at that point. And as a matter of fact, we do too. We're, we're staying with my wife's mom and dad most of the time in Kentucky. And we're, we are more or less their caregivers right now during the week. And her brother comes to look in on, on the weekend so we can get away to our meetings. I'll probably say more about that later, but her dad's 85, and he's had two strokes, maybe three, and uh, has so many things wrong with him, but he won't, he won't lay down. He won't just lay down and, and say, that's it. He, he keeps trying to go. I took him to Walmart yesterday, and uh, he wanted to pick out a furnace filter. Nobody could pick that out but him. And, uh, boy, I mean, he just creeps along, just barely can move. His knees are gone. And, uh, but he wanted to go. And so he went in there and picked out his filter. And we went back out. It took a long time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it probably, my wife said the other day, I wonder if this will be his last Christmas. But, uh, you know what? He's ready to go. He's been a man of God all of his life. He, he started the church where I got saved. And where my wife got saved and many, many others have been saved there. But this is, uh, this is his testimony. Now who can cause an old man who's about to say goodbye to lift up both of his dying hands with a tear running from his eyes? With his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile and say, don't fear. For the one who brought me through the storm will lead me home from here. Oh, he can, and I know that he'll stand 
by your side when the world comes crumbling in. For no one's ever done what he's done. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord's been good to us. He's been so good. The name of this song is He Takes Care of Me. He Takes Care of Me. We were in a meeting in Pennsylvania last year, and and a man came up and said, My daughter wrote that song, lives in Georgia. I think her name's Tracy Jones, and wrote this song, He Takes Care of Me. And I tell you, if he's taking good care of you today, uh, you ought to praise him today. Amen. Say amen. It doesn't hurt to say hallelujah. Glory to God. He takes care of me. Through a strange land I've wandered Like a poor little sheep Over mountains and rivers And a valley so deep But I have a good shepherd Who patiently leads Where the waters are cool It's there that he tenderly takes care of me Oh, He takes care of me. Through the darkness I still can see. With tender hands, just like a shepherd, He's always leading me. I've never been hungry when He did not feed. Not one single need as He fell to meet. Every day and in every way, He takes care of me. Amen. If He feeds the sparrows, and He knows when they fall, if He cares for the lilies, and His creatures so small, how much more He must love me, for I am His child. For needs great or small, praise God, He's always come through right on time. Oh, He takes care of me, through the darkness I still can see. With tender hands, just like a shepherd, He's always leading me. I've never been hungry when He did not feed. Not one single need as He failed to meet. Every day and in every way, He takes care of me. Why should I worry? Why should I doubt Him? He's never failed me. Never one time. Every day and in every way, He takes care of me. Amen. Amen. We're going to move over and do a couple with the guitar. Might be somebody here from Kentucky needs to hear a guitar this morning. Anybody here from West Virginia? Anybody here from West Virginia? If you'll smile, I'll be able to tell. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'll tell you, some of the some of the finest people in the land, uh, in America, live in West Virginia. I mean, great people. They live back in hollers. How many even know what a holler is? You know what that? Down between two mountains. Uh, I mean, people live back in there. And, and there's a church down below Charleston that uh, is just a great church. I think they got about 70 people. I think every one of them say amen. I mean, they're just, they just they come to praise the Lord, and they got a preacher that just tells it like it is. And we go to that church, and there's a man in that church named Ron Hoy. And uh, Brother Ron, he had a singing family. Same thing happened to him that happened to us. They all grew up and 
and left him. But uh, he's a songwriter. And he sent me a song called uh, The Other Side of the Hill. And it's about Abraham and Isaac walking up. It was Mount Moriah. It was a mountain. But in West Virginia, they call everything a hill. They just do. And uh, he was walking up that mountain with his son. And God had said, sacrifice your son. Abraham didn't understand it. But he was obeying God. He went all the way. I mean, he took the knife in his hand, the Bible says. And Isaac was laid out there, ready to be the sacrifice. And no doubt, Abraham, probably the tears falling from his eyes and his hand trembling. And then all of a sudden, God interrupted that scene and said, Don't do it, Abraham. This was just a test. He said, Now I know. Now I know that you'll obey me. And he turned around. What did he see? He saw a ram. A ram caught in the thicket. That was the sacrifice. And that was God's provision. But Abraham didn't know it while he was walking up the mountain. And so he wrote this song. Uh, and the thought of it is, while Abraham was coming up one side of that mountain, there was a ram coming up the other side. And I don't know what mountain you may be climbing today, what you might be facing. But we've lived long enough and been in enough churches and met enough people to know that there are heartaches all over this building today. There are trials and there are battles and storms raging all over this building. Thank God for people who come to church and wear a smile even though the storm is raging. And some of you right now are climbing a mountain and you don't understand it. And some of you right now, the future looks uncertain, but this song is for you. Because uh, like this song says, God, God knows what you're coming, going through and God's already got the provision coming up the other side of the hill. You just keep on climbing. Climbing by faith, Abraham led his son up the hill. Bearing the wood on which the sacrifice would be killed. With confident steps, believing God, he obeyed his will. Not knowing his answer was already climbing the other side of the hill. God never sleeps and he's always busy in ways you can't see. Glory and good from this trial, you just wait and see. And while we despair and pray for help to follow His will, He's got a man that's already climbing the other side of your hill. There may be a mountain facing you that you don't want to climb. God has not revealed His plans to you, and your world's on the line. But out of your sight, already in motion, helps on the way. God already knew, and your answer was coming before you could pray. God never sleeps, and He's always busy in ways you can't see. And He'll get the glory, and good from this trial, you just wait and see. While we despair and pray for help to follow His will, He's got a man that's already climbing the other side of your hill. While we despair and pray for help to follow His will, Side of your hill. Hey. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All right, let's do one more. And, uh, boy, I like that. I mean, I like the song and I like the response. I'm hearing amens and I saw some hands in the air. And you, say, you say, Brother Epley, you sure do talk a lot about that. If you knew some of the places where we go. And there's a verse in the Bible that you went walking through dry places, seeking rest, and finding nothing. <laughs> It's just good to be in a place where there's some life. Amen. Thank God for life. And I can tell you why you've got life. I can tell you that. I mean, there's several reasons, but I really believe this is a church that reaches out. And you reach out for others. You reach out. I saw that bus, one of, the, one of your buses today. And, and I saw them coming through the doors. And, and I know this is a church that reaches out. And you know, our church, Marion Avenue Baptist Church, is a church that reaches out. And uh, God just blesses places like that. He, he, there's a special presence of the Lord, I believe, in a church that's, that's reaching out for people, reaching out for nobody, people that nobody else cares about. And I thank God for you. We're going to do a song <clears throat> it's called, Lord, You've Been So Gracious to Me. And He has been gracious. Can I say this to you today? Don't let go of thanksgiving. Amen. Just because the day is over, keep that thankful heart. I mean, it'll bless you and it'll bless others. And God will bless you for having a grateful heart. Lord, you've been so gracious to me. Lord, I've always had food on my table. We ought to shout right there. You know it? Man, there's people in other countries. They don't have any food. They don't have a table. They don't have a plate. They eat all eat off of a leaf. Some rice. If they get a handful of rice today, they'll be thankful. Lord, I've always had food on my table, and I'm blessed with a wonderful home. My good friends to me are so precious. Your love is all I've ever known. Lord, you've been so gracious to me. You gave me a fine family. You proved you loved me on Calvary. Lord, you've been so gracious to me. Lord, you've been so gracious to me. There's a peace that's beyond understanding. And it comes from the Father above. His riches could never be measured because of our Savior's great love. Some morning I'll wake up in glory. I'll see my dear loved ones again. Hallelujah, it's really going to happen. Our joys there never shall be. Lord, you've been so gracious to me. You gave me a fine family. You proved you loved me on Calvary. Lord, you've been so gracious to me. Lord, you've been so gracious to me. You proved you loved me on Calvary. Lord, you've been so gracious to me. Gracious to me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody got a testimony? I mean, one of those where you just can't help it. I'm not, not talking about one of those where you got to try to think of something to say, but is there anybody just about to burst wide open and you just got to say, thank God He did this. Anybody like that? I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of like that myself. Amen. Chapter number four. Let me say again, I sure appreciate your dear sound man. I see two men up there now, but I appreciate the sound man. The only time he gets any attention is when something goes wrong. And then everybody looks. But uh, 
I sure appreciate him, and and uh, it's easy to sing here. And uh, you know Brother Butch Temple. You know Brother Butch, don't you? Uh, he's our sound man now at Marion Avenue. Boy, he's a good one. He's a good one. He makes it easy where you don't have to labor to sing. Well, we're in Ephesians. I mean Philippians. I'm sorry, Philippians chapter number four. And if you're really familiar with your Bible, you know. Uh, <clears throat> Some of the passages in here, they're really some of the most uh, familiar passages in the whole Bible. We'll start at verse number 4 in Philippians chapter number 4. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. That word careful there means full of care. It means worried. It means anxious. Be careful for nothing. Notice that. Nothing. <laughs> you say, now wait a minute. There's some things you've got to worry about. But that's not what God says. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. There is that word, thanksgiving. Amen. With thanksgiving. Always thank God for what He has done. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There it is, my friend, the peace of God. And this old world, this poor old sin-sick world, this poor nation of America now that is so sin-sick, they're out there trying to find peace and trying to find some joy and trying to find some purpose in all the wrong places. And thank God I found it right here. Amen. And I found it in Him. The peace of God. It passes all understanding. You can have peace when you don't even understand how you can have peace. In the midst of the storm, you can have peace. And it shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That word keep has to do with guard. It will guard your heart. It will guard your mind. This peace of God. And then the Bible says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank You for the Word of God. Lord, if all we did was read that passage, it would do us all good today. There's so much power in Your Word. But Lord, I thank You that I have a, a, a while to say, make some comments that You've given me, some thoughts You've given me out of this passage, dear Lord. And, and I pray You'd fill me with Your Spirit, Lord. And thank You for helping us sing. Lord, I felt... I felt Your hand. I felt Your your touch and Your help today. And I, pr I appreciate it so much. And, and Lord, I thank You for the liberty that is here. Now, Lord, help me as I speak and give the dear ones ears to hear what the Spirit has to say in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what time should I be done? Okay, so I've got about, uh, about ten minutes here. Okay, I'll just throw out some thoughts here. Today, my, my, my thought is this, staying up in a world that's going down. Brother, we need to stay up. We need to stay up. We need to, we need to keep, keep a, a positive spirit, a, keep a, an excellent spirit. As Brother Jack Trever, who lives, who, who lives constantly in pain, uh, arthritis and can't turn his neck and some nights doesn't sleep. Brother Jack Trever preaches about your, your prevailing spirit. Everybody's going to have a down time once in a while and the tears will flow and we'll feel uh, a little bit discouraged once in a while, but our prevailing spirit should be up. We ought to have, we ought to have the joy of the Lord. Amen? Uh, I mean, the Bible says, they that in, in the book of Psalms, they that uh, see me, they that fear thee, think about this, they that fear me will be glad when they see me. 
people who really fear the Lord and love the Lord, he said, they're going to be glad to see me. I want to ask you today, are people glad to see you? Are people glad to see you? There's some people who just, there's kind of a dark cloud that just is over their head all the time. And it just seemed to be gloomy on the dark side. That's not a testimony for Jesus, my friend. That's not a good testimony. And uh, you say, well, I don't know. I'm just wired that way. I'm just made that way. Hey, if you're born again, you've got different wiring. Amen? If you're born again, you're a child of God. And I do, I do realize that pe- people have different uh, makeups and people have different personalities. I know that. And, and some people may have been raised in a, in a home that was dark and gloomy. But, you know, I talked to a man back there a while ago, and uh, he told me that he was raised in a horrible atmosphere. But I could tell back there he had a good spirit, had a real good spirit. And uh, I thank God for people like that, overcomers, amen? But here are just a few pointers I'll throw out today. If we want to stay up, you know, and there's so much, there's so much that depends on us staying up. Dad, if you're a dad... In a home, if you're a husband and a dad in a home, you need to be up. I mean, your your wife needs a husband who's up, and and your children need to see a man who's got the joy of the Lord. And mothers, mothers, the Bible talks about a joyful mother of children. You need to be that. You you don't need to be gloomy. You don't need to be down. Brother Brown tells about a an evangelist that came to Marion Avenue years ago and. And he made this statement. He said, my mother almost sent me to hell. Brother Brown quoted him, and he told who it was. He said, my mother almost sent me to hell. He said she was saved, and she was, you know, a godly woman. But he said she was depressed. She was gloomy. She was down. And he said, I grew up thinking, I don't want that. If that's Christianity, I don't want that. My friend, we owe it to our families. We owe it to our neighbors. Amen. We owe it to those we're trying to win to the Lord. (laughs) And uh, we owe it to the Lord. Amen. To stay up. Number one, if we want to stay up in a world that's going down, meet with God every morning. (laughs) Have a meeting with God every morning. Amen. Amen. Get up and meet with the Lord. You say, Brother Epley, I'm not a morning person. I'm not either. Boy, when I get up in the morning, I feel dead. When I get up in the morning, I need to find a newspaper, get the obituary column, see if my name's in there. I feel so dead. But you know what? I found this out. I go somewhere and I meet with God. And, and things begin to change. And, and start your prayers off with thanksgiving and praise. Don't just rush into God's presence and and start saying, I need this and I need this. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. I mean, prayer has a gate. Amen? And enter into his, that gate of prayer with thanksgiving. and Enter into His courts with praise. You know what will happen? The presence of God will get in on your prayer. Amen? That's why some people only pray two minutes a day. I want, I want, I want to point you out today, but, but uh, you know who you are. And God knows who you are. You pray two minutes a day, if that much. Some of you have graduated to five minutes a day. That's pitiful. That's pitiful, my friend. A man wrote a song, Sweet Hour of Prayer, and a lot of Christians have no idea what a sweet hour of prayer is. But I tell you, you can know. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Just start thanking God and praising God and honoring God and lift Him up. Use some Bible language. Amen? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. And and praise God. Meet with God in the morning. You'll be in good company if you do. Moses and Abraham and David and, and many in the Bible. Jesus Himself. Jesus, rising up a great while before day, went into a solitary place and there prayed. And uh, He's our example. God fed His people in the morning with manna. God spoke to His people from Mount Sinai in the morning. God said, I want a sacrifice in the morning. God uh, said, kindle a fire in the morning. And all these things in the Old Testament uh, church 
in the wilderness, the Israelites, God said, do these things in the morning. God, David, the man after God's own heart, David said, my voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I lift up my prayer unto thee. And look up. And uh, we need to meet with God every morning. Start your day with God. His presence will be with you all day long. Amen. Number two, if you want to stay up in a world that's going down, don't live in the land of bad news. I'm, I'm old enough to remember when the news in America was a, maybe a 6 o'clock or a 10 o'clock slot and a man like Walter Cronkite would come on and give some news for the day and that was it. Now we have entire channels. Entire, the, the, all day long, it's all news. All day long, it's news. And most of it's bad. Most of it's negative. America's become news crazy. And don't get caught in that current. But I, I, I have no doubt some of you are already caught in that current. One man admitted, he said, I'm a Fox News junkie. I'm a news junkie. If you're going to watch any news, don't watch fake news. But <laughs> James 3.1 says, Be not many masters. But some people try to master the news. <laughs> you say, well, I, I need to be informed. I need to be informed. I'll agree with that. But you can get so informed that you're deformed. <laughs> hey, my friend, can I tell you this? You don't need to know everything. God knows everything. He can handle it. Amen. He doesn't even need to sleep. He's up all night anyway. God knows everything. He can handle that. He's God. You don't need to know everything. <laughs> but some people think they do. Remember these verses here? Here's what we're to think about. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. How much... How much do you see on the news or on the television that's pure? <laughs> Whatsoever things are lovely. That's what we're to keep our mind on, my friend. Hey, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying you shouldn't know some news. We should. We ought to know what's happening in our world. But to sit there hour after hour. One man came up to me and he said, I live in the land of bad news. I could tell it. Don't do it. Don't live in the land of bad news. Amen. Amen. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the goodness of God. Amen. Here's another one. If you want to stay up in a world that's going down, choose cheerful companions. <laughs> Somebody said, you are what you eat. And I'll tell you, you are what you, who you spend time with. That's right. The company you keep can make you or break you. Let me say it again. The company that you keep can make you or break you. Let me say it again. The company that you keep can make you or break you. It can. I mean, there's so much in the Bible. Proverbs 13.20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. I don't think God would mind one bit if we arrange that a little bit to say, He that walketh with Spiritual men shall be more likely to be spiritual. He that walketh with happy men or, or women, if I'm talking about friendships here, shall more, be more likely to be happy. He that walketh with negative men or women or teenagers, more likely to be negative. A woman came to, to counsel with Brother Brown. At Marion Avenue, she said, I'm depressed. I'm depressed. And he looked right at her and he said, can I ask you a question? She said, yes. He said, have you been talking about me? That woman. <laughs> How did he know? How did he know? Have you been talking? He meant negative, in a negative way. Have you been talking about me? She said, How did you know? He said, I've seen where your car's been parked. She'd been spending time with the church gossip and the church backbiter. She'd been spending time with that woman and Brother Brown put two and two together. And listen, because of that, this woman was depressed. 
depressed. Spend time with, with people who love the Lord. And, and you know, if, when, I, when, I, when I bring this out, Brother Angel, I always think, somebody's sitting out there thinking, but Brother Epley, I'm married to this person who's down. I'm married to this person who is gloomy. I'm married to this person who doesn't have joy. And all I can say is, you made a vow to God. And you stay together. And you pray. And you be what you ought to be. But there might be a chance that your mate is sitting here right now listening to this. And may the Spirit of God touch the heart of that person. I thank God I live with a happy woman. I live with a spiritual woman. I live with a, a beautiful woman. And you know what? When you're beautiful on the inside, it comes on the outside. And I thank God for that. One more and I'm done. If you want to stay up in a world that's going down, <laughs> you better listen to the right kind of music. There's nothing that will affect your spirit. I heard Brother Brown say it. I believe it's true. I know Brother Angel has probably said it. Nothing will affect your spirit any more, more than the music that you listen to. In the Bible, you'll find King Saul. King Saul started out good and he turned bad. King Saul got depressed. He got so depressed he wanted to kill somebody. He got so down and out. He was gloomy. He was sad. He, he got negative and he got envious and he full of jealousy and got murderous and he became a mass murderer. He, he mass murdered a group of priests in the Bible. King Saul. And you know what the remedy was? His servant said, you know what? If we don't do something, one of these times he's going to throw that spear and hit somebody. We better do something. They said, let's, let's find somebody who can play on a harp and bring them in and let them play some beautiful music. You know who they found? They found David. And David came in and played his harp. No, knowing David, it was something religious. It was something about God. And it was beautiful. And he may have sang some of his psalms. Who knows? And the Bible says over in 1 Samuel 16, don't look it up right now, but it says the evil spirit departed. <laughs> There's a music that can drive away an evil spirit. <laughs> On the other hand, there's a music that can invite evil spirits. Amen. Rock music invites evil spirits. I think much of the country music of today. Oh, I can't hide behind this pulpit. They still see me. You go, some of you listen to country music. I know you do. And my friend, I'll tell you, it, it, it'll bring you down. It'll depress you. It'll, it'll uh, put thoughts in your mind that ought not be there. You want to get rid of that. And this is not a commercial because we've got CDs today. It's not a commercial, but I'm telling you, listen to God's music, happy music, joyful music, music that makes you think about the Lord and makes you want to love the Lord. Amen. Our time's up. Father, I pray You'd help us to stay up. Lord, we owe it to those we love. Husbands owe it to their wives. Wives owe it to their husbands. Parents owe it to their children. Lord, and grandchildren to be up, to stay up, to have the joy of the Lord in this world that's going down. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen.